school folders are shared only with persons who are authorized to do so. The system will be monitored on a regular basis to ensure relevance and uptake. On the research page, you can find a variety of materials to assist you in carrying out your role as school members. Other information will be provided on a timely basis to assist the schools and institutions in I'm a proud father of six. Away from my six, I have 120 at, at school that my last daughter attend. Education to me is the key the goal in life. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Ministry of Education and Youth. We thank you for joining us for this very important press conference as we seek to update you on matters related to general education and, in particular, teacher migration, which has been topical over the past few weeks. With us, of course, this morning is the Honorable Minister of Education and Youth, uh, Faithful Williams, and she will be bringing you the update. We acknowledge with her is um, Chief Education Officer Acting, Dr. Cassian Troop. And online we have members of the Senior Executive Management Team who will be, of course, listening in and may um, add their um, whatever updates they can um, via notes. And of course, we um, have our media colleagues online and they will be um, uh, they will have the opportunity to raise questions and to seek clarification on any matters after the minister has made her presentation. So at this time, I invite Minister Williams to the podium, and she will speak, and afterwards we will take your questions. Thank you, Mr. Steer. Good morning, everyone. Um, let me acknowledge members of the media who are here with us this morning. Thank you so much. Let me acknowledge as well Dr. Troop, our Chief Education Officer, Actin. Uh, members of the ministry, we would have heard that uh, senior or senior executive management is online. Um, good morning to you. I know that our permanent secretary, Actin, uh, Mrs. Maureen Dwyer, is not with us this morning, and that's because she has to attend to another very important issue. Um, this morning at, um, at uh, infrastructure committee meeting of cabinet. So she's there, so we are here this morning to speak with you. So we want to update the nation on a matter we know is of national interest to Jamaicans. I know that there have been many discussions, many articles, many social media posts about the number of teachers who are or will be migrating and the likely impact of that on the education sector as we emerge from the pandemic and given the fact that we are on the cusp of the new school year. Um, I'm sure you know that globally we're seeing dislocation of workforce in different countries as a result of the pandemic, as persons consider whether or not they want to continue working in their current position, relocate, or make other decisions. As an open economy, with borders that are open, we know that Jamaicans migrate 
temporarily, as in the agricultural programs over the decades, and permanently to join families or to respond to work opportunities. Over the years, we have seen some of our teachers make a very personal decision to migrate, and those decisions we have to respect and to wish them well. Sorry to see them go, but we respect their decisions. As to where we are currently, uh, I know that I would have given a couple of interviews last week and indicated to the nation in terms of the number of reports that we would have got of resignations. And I'd indicated that last week at that time we were seeing 80. The current number that we're looking at, and this is for the period July to present, um, is 167. These resignations we know will impact staffing for the new school year as they are so close to the start of the new school year. Obviously, resignations that would have happened in the last school year, um, we uh, would have seen where those would have been filled, at, or at least many of those would have been filled, and so those would not be in this number that I'm quoting to you this morning. Of course, we are still getting information from our school principals, and so these numbers, this 167, could change um, uh, as we move towards the end of August and into September. The school year officially begins on the 5th of September, and even up to that time, there may be resignations. And some of these, uh, of the resignations that we've gotten, may be due to migration, um, we do not know precisely because uh, our teachers are under no obligation to tell us why they're resigning. It's a personal decision and we respect that. Some do, some don't. Um, and so we know that resignations are for a number of different reasons. But I also know that um, there are teachers who would have left, at least I know one example of a high school who've indicated uh, uh, I think maybe one or two teachers who would have left, and they've gone to private schools here in Jamaica. So they've changed schools, changed, left the public sector to the private sector, and so on. So I'm saying that because there are many reasons for resignations uh, of persons. There are many reasons for resignations among our teachers. Having said all of that, I do want to really thank our teachers, our principals, our administrators, our parents for their steadfastness and the work that they would have done over the past two school years as we managed through the pandemic. As everyone knows, it is widely acknowledged that our education sector has been hardest hit. Our response has been to utilize the virtual space, to have tablets, laptops, and other devices in the hands of our teachers and students to pay for connectivity of our teachers during the worst of the pandemic, to have a national, a national learning management system that our teachers and students could meet in the virtual space first ever in Jamaica. I know it was not easy, but our teachers labored on, and for that we are grateful. Today we're using this medium to acknowledge the staffing challenges that some of our school leaders would have reported as a result of the resignation of some of our teachers, and the short supply of teachers in some of the subject areas taught at the secondary level. Um, as our school boards pivot to respond to these challenges efficiently, I want to itemize some of the responses from the Ministry of Education and Youth to help our principals and our school boards as they prepare for the new school year. So let me give um, Jamaicans a sense of who are the new, the new pool of teachers and what are their specializations. So we would have gotten uh, figures that says there are 964 specialist teachers who have just completed their program of study and may be available for employment in the government teaching service. Contact can be made with 
the heads of teacher training institutions, and I, I know that many of our principals would have already uh, made those, uh, made that contact. And looking at our 2022 teacher training graduates by specialization, I see accounting major with business, I see biology, education double major, um, I see chemistry teachers coming out, computer science, a double major, computer science with business education, computer science with mathematics. I see 111 early childhood um, education teachers. We have some 29 English double majors, 20 English language and literature. We have 140 mathematics double major and we're seeing uh, others with double major in maths with business education and so forth. We have some physical education teachers as well, netball and cricket, netball and football, netball and hockey. Um, we're seeing primary education teachers, 259 of those. Uh, we're seeing social studies, Spanish major with English, Spanish major with French for a total of 964 uh, teachers with specialization who would have graduated from our um, teacher education institutions this year. And um, I'm sure many of those will be taking up uh, you know, appointments in our schools. Additionally, I just want to point out that included in the 964 would be 121 teachers who are on the Ministry of Education and Youth Special Scholarship Program. They would have graduated from more teacher training institutions, also expected to take up their position in the teaching force in September of this upcoming school year. These teachers on this special scholarship program are bonded for a period of five years, and among them are 67 mathematics teachers, 32 teachers of physics and chemistry, and 17 with industrial education specialization. We also have uh, teachers coming out of the Teachers on the Build Out or Science Teachers Program Boost. We have 10 new graduates specializing in mathematics and science uh, that will enter the system as pre-trained graduate teachers through the Boost Program. This is a reverse scholarship partnership program between the University of the West Indies, MONA, and the Ministry of Education and Youth, where the services of the best science students can be accessed while school leaders ensure pedagogical training is provided for these individuals to improve their effectiveness on the job. These teachers, while being compensated for the job of teaching, will receive their annual tuition cost at the end of each year of service, up to three years. There are other strategies that we have put together to, um, to inform our principals, uh, for them to utilize to make it easier uh, to fill those spaces that they have. And we've looked at the voluntary relocation program. Uh, during last year and, and probably the year before, we have been rationalizing our junior high school, the junior high section of the primary and junior high school. So we would have had a number of specialist teachers who would have been retained and are currently deployed in our primary schools as generalist teachers. These teachers have been permanently employed and some have been appointed as senior teachers. Um, we we are indicating to these teachers that um, they can use our voluntary relocation program to um, go into the high schools uh, with their specialization. Of course, we would need to um, be in touch with you to know you, who you are so that we can ensure that in the movement you do not lose any of your current benefits. And instead of resigning and giving up uh, the permanent status in the government teaching service, as well as their senior teacher appointment and attendant allowances, the teachers will be allowed to take up new appointment with all the benefits of the substantive post in another public school. 
Under this facility, the school board employs the teacher for one year of service uh, in a clear vacancy, after which the school board that recruited the teacher may decide to retain the teacher permanently with all the benefits earned intact. Um, we also, in, in thinking about teachers and what we have been doing um, well prior to this, and which we continue to do, we do have teachers coming in under the Jamaica-Cuban bilateral program. We have 70 teachers there, 59 of them are Spanish teachers, five in chemistry, three mathematics, and three in physics. Um, we all we have a framework agreement or an MOU with the Cuban government under which we bring in these teachers um, into our system, which we have been doing now for many years. And of course, we always keep the lines of communication open. And in this case, um, should there be a need for additional teachers, uh, you know, in terms of Spanish and some of the other specializations. We are also given our principals pre-approval for the replacement of teachers in clear vacancies and temporary posts funded by the ministry, meaning whereas before they may have had to go through a process of informing us and we, we um, getting back to them, they getting back to us, we getting back to them. We are saying uh, we're giving pre-approval for the replacement of teachers in clear vacancies. Obviously, the formal request should still be submitted by each school for the formal response by the regional office, but this will create um, efficiency, greater efficiency in the system and reduce the, the time that it would take in terms of um, you know, the back in and forth in between the ministry and the teachers. We've also um, created the facility for school boards to request the extension of teachers who are scheduled to proceed on retirement effective September 1, 2022 and beyond, and have performed well based on their last performance appraisal report to fill areas of specialization at the secondary school level for which there is a short supply of teachers determined by the response to advertisements or reported lack of suitability of respondents by the school boards. Um, obviously, again, this is um, a decision that the particular teacher would have to make, but we're just indicating uh, the willingness of the ministry to help to facilitate this. Um, approval is also granted for school boards to employ teachers using the part-time facility to engage trained individuals who may not be able to commit to a full-time work schedule. Um, and these would include teachers who have retired since January 2018 and beyond and have performed well based on their last performance appraisal report prior to their rep retirement and may also be recruited using the part-time facility, meaning um, up to 20 hours of work to fill areas of specialization at the secondary level for which we have a short supply of teachers. And again, as determined by the response to advertisements or reported lack of suitability of respondents by the this, this school board. Uh, we will also um, continue to allow schools to recruit pre-trained graduates, that is individuals with at least a first degree in areas of expertise that are in short supply or in the specialization or subject area that the teacher will be required to teach. These teachers should be offered the opportunity to undergo pedagogical training on the job by internal or external stakeholders as part of the professional development portfolio at the school level. And so in essence, these are university teachers. They have first degree, but not the teaching diploma and um, based on the numbers, we believe that there are approximately 200 such persons coming out of UWI, some from UTEC and some from NCU. Um, so this can be added to the, the, those earlier numbers that we talked about. We will also allow the engagement of final year student teachers in accredited institutions or programs to fill areas of specializations for which we have a short supply of teachers 
again determined by the response of advertisements or reported lack of suitability of respondents by the school board. These teachers are normally engaged on a temporary basis and paid in the category of a pre-trained teacher. Special approval must be sought with justification and the teacher's deployment scheduled as best as possible and it should not compete with the training institution's program of study as this may lead to frequent absence from the job or a delay in the completion of the student teacher's program of study. Schools may also use the redeployment of staff to increase the number of teaching sessions of a staff member where the maximum number of sessions were not maximized. And as you may know, a regular teacher has a minimum of 28 sessions and a session ranges from 35 to 45 minutes. Um, and for a senior teacher, the minimum number of sessions is 22 sessions. So greater efficiency in looking at the number of sessions um, for each teacher may add a session to a teacher's number of sessions. Um, and when you look across the entire system, we believe that this will um, create some, you know, one or two teachers at each school for maybe a total of about 300 teachers. Uh, ob obviously, our schools as well in operating, they can take the decision to merge smaller classes to reduce teacher demand for a particular subject area. So in our primary schools, and we know we have many small, medium-sized primary schools, um, you can merge two smaller classes, and I'm sure this is within the normal operations of our schools. Schools may utilize what's called blocked timetable approach, where all of or a subset of the teachers for a subject area are timetabled at the same time to ensure all students are being taught by a trained teacher through regrouping, meaning um, let's say you have four uh, teachers of mathematics in a school and you've lost one, um, then um, you know, doing this block timetable will allow um, you to uh, put more students doing that particular subject area into the class. Yes, it will lead to increased students in the class, but it allows you as a school to um, ensure that you don't have te uh, classes without teachers. We also are calling on schools to increase the use of information and communication technology. Uh, flipped classrooms where teachers are well aware the student would start their lessons at home, finish it in the classroom. To use videotaping of lessons, televised learning, etc., that allow for the reuse of asynchronous experiences which may be monitored with the assistance of student leaders. Schools also have access to the suite of live and recorded lessons which have been created by the ministry through the Public Broadcasting Corporation of Jamaica or eHome School Network for early childhood, primary and secondary schools, our own the Ministry of Education and Youth YouTube channels, and the educatejamaica.gov.jm platform. Resources will also be made available on the Jamaica Learning Passport, the Ministry of Education and Youth e-resources app, the online pathway to education portal, and through partnerships with online learning partners. Um, we have some 1,214 recorded lessons available for instruction from early childhood all the way to tertiary um, in our education system. So schools are encouraged to review the resources and, in and ensure that they're used appropriately based on the national standards curriculum. And um, as I wind down, uh, we're encouraging our school administrators to share their resume database as well with each other to support targeted and efficient recruitment of staff. And we are asking schools to also capitalize on the shared expertise of teachers through the Twinning of Schools program. There were several schools involved with this program um, within the same quality education circle. Uh, they may operate with the same timetable or for areas where there's a short supply and share expertise using the virtual space or recorded lessons. 
In some instances, a teacher may rotate or rove on a weekly basis to provide in-person lessons across twinned or paired schools. And where this is done, the ministry will compensate the teacher for the traveling cost. Of course, special approval must be requested for this facility to be funded with appropriate justification. And finally, let me say the ministry is aware that the nuances on the ground are many, the nuances in our schools are many, and therefore we encourage our school leaders to make contact with their regional offices to explore other creative approaches to ensure that teaching, con uh, uh, teaching or contact time is maximized at the school level as we, um, uh, you know, as we move forward to the beginning of another school year in which we are fully expecting that we will um, see all of our students back in the face-to-face -face environment. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister Williams, and that was a comprehensive report on the state of play in terms of the arrangements that are being put in place, put in place to uh, have us ready for the start of the new school year. Uh, at this time, we're going to invite our colleagues who are online from the media to pose their questions. As usual, we ask that you indicate by the using the raise hand feature. And of course, when you are able to, when you have been identified, then you may um, indicate which media house you are from, and uh, you can pose your question. So, I'm going to ask at this time that you indicate uh, if you have any questions for Minister Williams, and we will be able to accommodate you. Okay. So the first person is Alfia Saunders from the Jamaica Obser Observer. Alfia, may you go ahead with your question, please? Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Um, Minister, the teachers or the JT has already indicated that the teachers are not pleased with what has been proposed so far in terms of the compensation review. My question is, what does the Ministry of Education and the government really plan to do to encourage teachers to stay in the public school system in Jamaica in terms of salaries, the benefits, and the conditions of work. Some specifics. With regards to, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me, Althea? Yes, yes Okay, so with regards to the compensation review, um, Althea, as you know, uh, the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service has the uh, so purview over that we support the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service in whatever information they request from us in order to adequately do this review. Uh, what I do know is that the JTA would have met with the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service last week and they would have had their own comments over um, about what you know they thought of that meeting. Just a quick follow-up, what, what about conditions of work, Minister, the environment, um, staff rooms, and so on? All right, so in terms of the infrastructure of our schools, um, you would have heard, I hope you would have heard me several times talk about the continued need for continued maintenance and for the upgrade of many of our schools. We do that as a matter of course, and I know we're getting ready this week to meet with all our principals across our regions um, to indicate to them what would have been done, what projects would have been completed in the last school year, what are the projects that are uh, on the table for the next school year. Um, we agree that uh, because we've, we have a database here uh, that was put together uh, by the World Bank and uh, architectural students from UTEC. They went out and they looked at 
all our schools. They did a physical um, review of our schools, and so we have the database that um, is ranked to let us know which schools are satisfactory, which schools are not, and which schools are having issues. Um, uh, you know, we, we have that information. It's going to take time for us to um, get to all our schools. There are approximately 1,000 schools across Jamaica with varying needs, and I do agree that many of the facilities in our schools for our teachers and our administrators need to be um, upgraded. I've indicated to the National Education Trust, who manages most of our major infrastructure work, that um, you know, for major works going on at schools, we have to begin to construct an administrative block for our schools because after all, our teachers, our administrators, they go to work, it's their workplace. And so I have no quarrel at all with any call for us to upgrade or um, the, the staff facilities at school and um, we will continue to do that within the constraints of the budgets that we have, but that is, um, that is something that uh, you know, I've, I've been talking about, and, and as we continue to maintain and improve our schools, you will begin to see better facilities for our teachers and our administrators. Thank you very much, Minister. And our next question is from Kimon Francis uh, from the RGR Gulina Group. Thanks, Colin. Morning. Uh, Minister, there are concerns, certainly from the opposition, that mainly STEM teachers are leaving the system, whether for overseas jobs or just leaving, and that these teachers leave with years of experience. Um, what are the numbers saying in terms of resignation for this specific group? And are those concerns warranted? Okay, so the, the number I would have given you this just now is the, the global number that includes everyone. We don't yet um, have the breakdown in terms of the specialization of teachers. This is da data we're still collating, we're still gathering um, as to specifically where. But I would have indicated to you just how many um, new teachers are coming into the system with specialization. Yes, I know that we do not want to lose our experienced teachers to migration, and obviously we, you know, we have to deal with teachers who retire, um, and those teachers would have the maximum uh, experience possible in the system, and we have to replace those teachers with, uh, you know, new teachers or, or or others that we can get on other programs. So there is um, a constant renewal in the, in the teaching profession. Um, we would love all of our teachers to stay to retirement, but that's not the way the world works. Um, teachers, like anyone else, will make personal decisions about their lives and about uh, their opportunities. And what is important for us is that um, we continue to train teachers through our teacher training institutions um, to come into our system to offer incentives for them to, uh, you know, have specialization in the in the in the various fields that we need them. And I would have gone through the list, um, indicating the different specializations that are coming into the system. Thank you. And Kimon, you have a follow-up question, I believe. Right. This is in relation to a point the minister made about, well, I wasn't clear on it if she was saying that there are some teachers leaving university or there are some people leaving university, rather, who can come into the system as teachers, but they don't have diploma. I just need clarification on that because I need to know what this means for the JTC bill that is currently under review at the Joint Select Committee and how they define a teacher. If you, you are required to have a degree in education or its equivalent, a first degree with a postgraduate diploma. All right, so um, going to the, so these are university graduates who would have a degree in education, a degree in their specialization, in their specialization, 
but not yet a diploma in education. And we are saying that those teachers can come into the classroom, obviously, with um, support at the school level in terms of the pedagogical knowledge that they would need. Thank you, Minister. And we have a question here from Javine McLean from CVM TV. Will shadow teachers get full benefits while working for the one year period? I'm sorry, go ahead, Dr. Mr. Sear. Yes, sir. Do you want to repeat the question? The question sorry. is, I'm just repeating, will shadow teachers get full benefits while working for the one year period? Or I'm going to ask our chief education officer to take that. I know she was on an interview this morning talking about that very topic of shadow teachers. So I'll ask okay. her to take Thank that. Thank you very question. much. Over to you, Dr. Yeah. True. Okay. Thank you very much for that question with regards to our shadows. So our shadows, just for clarity, are what we call educational paraprofessionals. And so these are individuals that are high school graduates, may have been exposed to some post-secondary education, have a natural proclivity to working with children, and so they indicate to us that interest, and we train them, and we deploy them to work with our students who have been referred to us for that kind of support. So it's an individualized support for students who are assessed by psychoeducational um, clinicians and they send us a report to say that this student, for example, will need support for toileting, to go to the bathroom, will need support to eat, will need support to stay on task, and so forth. So these are educational paraprofessionals that we engage. Sometimes these persons are referred to us by parents. These are caregivers in their own homes who have been working with these children, and so they refer them to us, and we also expose them to a period of training and then deploy them. So they are compensated under a contractual arrangement for 10 months throughout the system from September to June, and we compensate them and according to that um, facility that we have provided for those children. So the benefits under that contract will be accorded to those persons as they come into this paraprofessional experience to support our students who need individualized support. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Truth. And we do have another question from Alfia Saunders. I do believe that you indicated you wanted to ask another one. So over to you, Alfia. Thank you, Colin. Um, Minister, the JTA has suggested that the JTC bill should be suspended and instead that uh, an education infrastructure development bill should be um, promulgated. Is that something the government is willing to consider? Um, let, me, let me say that across the education system, we have approximately 40,000 persons working in there. Um, who are doing many different tasks. I believe we have the capacity to do both, to do both the JTC bill. We started on this in February of this year in Parliament, the Joint Select Committee, in which we have heard from many um, different stakeholders across the board. Um, we will um, convene again when Parliament begins to consider all the recommendations, all the comments that we would have gotten and to um, you know, put the, the bill together so that we can take it to Parliament for it to be passed. In the meantime, we have others in our building department. We have a cadre of persons um, at NET, and we are getting ready to partner with a sister agency to help us in terms of our infrastructure. So there, there, there are enough people um, available to, to do all that we can do and all that we would like to do. There is not a need for us to be sequential in what we're doing. Um, the education sector is too large to require us to stop one thing and then start another thing that's obviously very inefficient. But also I'm just saying we can do both at the same time we can continue with the JTC bill in Parliament to get it to a stage where we can uh, take it 
pass it and pass the regulations associated with it and move towards implementation. This is a major recommendation of the Orlando Patterson report. Uh, you know, persons have been saying, oh, this report has been uh, completed uh, a, a year or so ago and we, we're not seeing anything. Well, the JTC bill is a recommendation, a major recommendation that is, is being worked on in the public sphere, um, parliament. We could not have been more public with that recommendation than we are in parliament. So we, the work will continue on that to completion and at the same time, we will be continuing the maintenance work that we do on the infrastructure. We will be continuing the major infrastructure work that needs to be done in all our, um, all our schools across Jamaica. Because as you know, many of our schools were created many, many decades ago. And of course, they are in need of um, you know, upgrade. They're in need of expansion. They are in need of new facilities, new, um, new electrical works, new plumbing works, and so on. And it's a constant, ongoing activity that we do here at the ministry. Thanks again, Minister. And Kimon Francis, again, has another question. Right, it's still in relation to the JTC Bill, um, Minister, I just want to know in terms of the university students, well, graduates, sorry, who will be coming into the classrooms, uh, how long will this be for? Because when the bill becomes law, it suggests that there'll be a breach in terms of this process. But the bill, as we're going through it, um, and as we're hearing from the different stakeholders, um, it's allowing us to refine our thoughts on the bill. Of course, as we live through this experience as well, it will help to inform us and in terms of the final bill that, that comes out. I know that within the bill, it does make room for professionals to come into the education sector. Um, persons who are not teachers in the traditional sense of the wor word, but they have uh, specialization that's needed from time to time, and it does make um, room for that to happen. And a question here, Minister, from Mr. McQueen again from CVM. Can you respond to the recent criticisms or comments that the ministry has been a bit lackadaisical in specific response to the migration of teachers? Um, the, the, the charges that the ministry has been lackadaisical in, in dealing with the migration of teachers. Would you care to comment on that? Well, um, Mr. Sear, or to the person um, you know, with that question, um, you would have heard on this very press briefing here this morning um, the many initiatives, and some of these initiatives are not new this morning. Some of these initiatives we use um, every year in the school system to ensure that we deal with um, any gaps in the teaching force. There are some um, that are new in terms of giving pre-approvals so that we cut down on the time uh, it takes to get this. We would have outlined how many teachers, um, new teachers there are coming into the system, our very own special education program. That's not something you put in place today. It was something that would have had to have been in place um, you know, over some period of time because it takes uh, two or three years to get teachers trained. So um, there has been an ongoing assessment because we do have um, teacher movements at the end of the school year and during the year in particular. We always have to ensure that we have replacement teachers for our teachers who are going off on their long leave, whether it's their four month leave or their eight months leave continually. We have to ensure that we have replacement teachers for those. We know that there is a percentage of teachers every year, year in, year out, who decide um, to exit the teaching profession for one reason or the other. It could be migration, but it could be moving on to a different field. It could be leaving the government and going into 
the private sector or a private school. So we do plan for um, a certain level of um, uh, attrition. We, I mean, the teaching profession, like any other profession, has attrition annually. Any profession in Jamaica, anywhere in the world, has attrition that companies, private sector companies plan for and us in government plan for as well. Um, this morning we would have laid out a number of different options that are available to our, our school boards or principals um, in, a, in a very public way. Normally we send a, a bulletin to our teachers. It's not something that we, in the normal course of thing, that we would call a press conference around. Um, so the, the preparation is there and will continue to be, be there. Um, maybe it's the first time you're hearing because we're doing the press conference this morning, but um, the, planning, the planning continues in education. We have to, it's a large system. There are well over 600,000 students in the system from early childhood through high school. We have approximately 25,000 teachers, so we have to constantly plan for the different eventualities in the system. Thank you very much, Minister. So indeed, uh, the ministry has been anything but lackadaisical. They have been very robust in its response and in its planning. And we thank you for that uh, clarification and uh, answering the question that was posed by Mr. McLean. At this point, we ha there's no indication that we have any other questions. And so I'd like to thank the members of the media for your um, attending here today and your questions. And we do wish you a very good day. Thank you.